What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. And I'm Anna. I do content here. And today, we're going to take a little bit of a, of a long form approach. We're going to answer 10 or 20 questions that we were asked via Instagram just yesterday. Um, we're just going to go with it and, and, and have some fun. Um, all the questions relate to basically what's going on right now um, from Odo Beckham Jr.'s controversial watch disaster mm -hmm. um, to the vintage watch market, to some of the new releases, um, and what's going on here at Theo and Harris. We've gone through a radical shift um, in our in our content, in our offering, in our branding, and uh, I know you guys are very interested in it. So let's get into the video. Boom, watch fan. So the first question is, in your opinion, what is the best GMT, Rolex GMT on the market right now? Really good question. Um, the Rolex GMT is in many ways like the new Daytona. Not to say that the GMT is new, uh, you know, it predates the Daytona. Mm -hmm. um, but the Daytona has historically, and still till today, receives a ton of hype. Um, and the GMT has in many ways always kind of lived in its shadow. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily know why. Maybe because it's slightly less sporty. It's a little bit more elegant, of course, for still a sports watch. Um, but the GMT is now getting really popular. Um, largely thanks to Rolex's release of the Pepsi GMT. It kind of set it on fire. Um, so from a vintage like POV, you have the 1675, which is the second generation GMT. Then you've got the 16750, which is the third generation GMT. Um, I think that 1675s are by and large undervalued, right? You can get them between like 14,000 and Largely 25,000 for most of them. Of course, there are outliers. For what it is, that's a fairly affordable market value. So right. I don't think that those have, have, have you know reached their height yet or anywhere near it. Um, but that being said, 16750s, which is the quick set successor to the 1675, they are particularly interesting. Um, they came in both matte dials and gloss dials, depending on the serial and the year they were manufactured. Um, and I think that the glossy dials um, that have you know, tritium patina, mm -hmm. custard color, are very uh, attractive. They have all that vintage character, but because the dials are gloss as opposed to matte, they're a little bit uh, less talked about. They're not as cool, they're not as sought after. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that those are a great opportunity. Coincidentally, and I'm not being uh, totally self-promotional, this is my actual opinion, um, we do have one in the shop um, at theowenharris.com. It's on a Jubilee bracelet, it's really pretty. Um, but again, my opinion is independent of the fact that we have one in the shop. You can go buy one from anyone else, if you so dare, um, and I still do recommend you look into the reference. So that's the long and the short of, of the GMT right now. Any plans for an NYC meetup this fall? Um, the answer is yes, we are actually having a meetup tonight, yep. Thursday night, um, yep. in Manhattan, which is gonna be super cool. It's at the Jean Rousseau Boutique. On Madison Avenue. On Madison Avenue, which yep. is amazing. We're also starting sort of a national tour for Theo and Harris. Yeah. So we're gonna be hosting meetups in major cities kind of everywhere. Yeah. Definitely Chicago, Boston, San Francisco eventually. Um, yes. Yeah, so we want to make meetups a more regular thing at yep. Theo and Harris and go outside of just the Northeast. Yes, we, we want to develop more, you know, right now our stronghold is digital, right? It's all over. We have uh, a right. disproportionate amount of fans in Australia. Shout out to you Australians. Um, it's amazing. And I would love to do, you know, events all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, but from a, you know, like gorilla, like feet on the ground, I want to build a real strong, like Northeast community mm -hmm. um, and then take that into, you know, other parts of the country and then at some point internationally as well. Um, but for right now, um, you guys in the Northeast, um, shoot me an email at info at theoandharris.com. Um, tell me where you're located um, so it'll help us better plan our meetups. Specifically, I think the next one we're looking to do is in Boston in late October. Um, so, so if you guys are based in Boston or in a commutable distance, um, let me know because if, if we can you know gauge the success of the event before we go and host an event, um, we will be more likely to host an incredible event. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an idea of what the events we do are, um, tonight's event on, on Madison Avenue and like 47th Street, uh, like Anna said, is with John Rousseau. But it's not, you know, just like, oh, meet Christian and Anna and drink wine. 
which is awesome. Um, but we'd like to make the events more educational than that. Um, not to say you're gonna sit in a class, but uh, for the event today, for example, Jean Rousseau, who is uh, our manufacturer of leather goods, um, is literally going to have you know one of their artisans um, placed in the middle of the room making a leather strap um, the way they should be made. Not like the Chinese, no offense to the Chinese, um, not like a lot of the Chinese crap that's out there. Um, yep. Very plasticky, all glued together, you know, poor quality. Um, they, they age real quick, they, they disintegrate. Um, I want the watch community to understand leather, right? Because leather is such an important part of watches. Yep. Um, so that's the long and the short of it. Again, that's the second time I'm saying that. Uh, <laughs> shoot me an email at info at theonarish.com. Tell me where you're located and we'll come to your city. Yeah, exciting. Thoughts on the BRO5? Um, do you know what that is? No. Can I show it to you? Please do. So this is Bell and Ross's <laughs> new release. <laughs> okay, so it's like... It's like a, a Nautilus in the bracelet. Nautilus. It's like a... T it, it, yeah. It's... Well, it, you know what it looks like? Uh, it I'm looks sorry. like the Icons watch. It looks <laughs> like the uh, Moser Icons watch. Look at exactly that. Right. It is. Boom. There it is. I know. Um, sorry. Some of you guys out there like it. That's no problem by me. Watch is all about, you know, taste. Um, especially at Bell & Ross, you know, Bell & Ross is not a brand that's, you know, known for technical innovation and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I actually like Bell & Ross quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I took screenshots of some other Bell & Rosses that I really like. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a beautiful GMT, um, I, right? Mm -hmm. You like it? I like the Explorer mm -hmm. dial, the Armchand. Yep. I love the bronze belly kind How of How much is that? This is like $4,000. It's, it's not really solid cool. gold. Um, I think that it's it's interesting, two things about the belly tanker that, that I find interesting. One. Um, I think it's interesting that Bell & Ross played with uh, an alternative metal. Bronze is, of course, becoming more mainstream in watches, um, but still, there are so many different variations uh, of color, right? There are darker mix uh, mixes. Um, this has a very yellow color, which I think is wonderful. Yeah. Um, I think that I w if I were to create, uh, you know, if I consulted on a watch um, and I wanted one, like an example of them in gold, I would recommend using the same exact mix that Bell and Ross did with the belly tanker. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, yeah, and here's another one. This is a little more classic. This is like their heritage line. Mm, that's Again, fun. nothing crazy. Um, well executed date, obviously faux patina or brown patina, but I, I like it. Um, it's not anything more than what it's supposed to be. You yeah. know, a, a very good looking, you know, three thousand dollar watch. Yeah. Um, don't hold it to a crazy high standard. Because um, it's not a, a complicated uh, uh, chronograph from Longa, mm -hmm. not supposed to be. Uh, it's just a good looking watch, and it, that's important to me. Is this one in that same price point? Is yeah, I, I think so. I have to check. But so then yeah. I think if it is like anywhere from three to five, yeah. even six thousand, like their lineup is really interesting if you're playing in that price range. I just feel like if your thing cool. is design, you, if that's your thing, um, then you should just do that well. And I don't think that the BRO5 is a good example of doing design well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Next. Please start vlogging. I'd like to see how you manage your day. We are going to start vlogging, um, but the more fun part of vlogging would be seeing what both of us do and how, no. yeah, and, and how the collection of Theo and Harris spends their day. So we're actually looking for people who are based in New York City or close to New York City uh, who have experience slash would like to uh, help us with vlogging. So if you are one of those people, please email me at Anna at theownharris.com and we will bring you vlogs. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, yes. I think vlogging is really cool. It'll give you, you know, give the audience a sneak peek into the behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, acquisition, um, you know, sales, mm -hmm. uh, events, things like that. It's fun. And, and we're, a ton, we're hysterical. We're, we're a ton of fun yeah. to hang out with. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about this whole Odell Beckham Jr. thing for a second. Um, he's uh, the controversial star of, of the Cleveland Browns. Um, and just last week, I believe, he was spotted um, in a game wearing a $300,000 Richard Mill. This caused an absolute uh, disaster, a, a PR nightmare. People went bananas. Not just Cleveland fans, but fans across the country. Fans of the sport went bananas. Now, that could just be because people hate uh, Odell Beckham Jr., which I've heard. Um, okay. But even removing that, I can understand how the average American dad, uh, the Cleveland Browns fan, who can no longer really afford to bring his two kids to a football game because tickets are absurd mm -hmm. and you need to sell an organ for a hot dog, right? I could see how that guy would find it unbearable that 
you know, this player is wearing a three hundred fifty thousand dollar watch. Right. Of course. Now, that's not to say that the you know Odell Beckham Jr. can't wear an expensive watch. That's not to say that you know they should make less money. That could be an opinion. Not necessarily what I'm saying here, though. Um, what I'm saying is it's kind of smug, right? It's kind of. Um, rubbing it in people's faces, mm -hmm. rubbing a, a sore issue in in you know in people's wounds, right? right? Yeah. So you spotted wearing this watch, it caused an absolute explosion um, all over media. Every channel had it on. Uh, people asked my opinion on it a thousand times. Moved on. And then just again last week, uh, he wore a two million dollar Richard Mill again, uh, a ridiculously expensive watch <laughs> on the field. Um, now two things. Um, one, Richard Mills are, is you know, very well known for being fairly delicate watches. Um, I've heard of them breaking when you slam a car door, right? I've heard uh -huh. of that. So on a football field, worse. <laughs> but the bigger development here came was the, the second Richard Mill, at a minimum, maybe the first two, but certainly the second, was actually a fake. Um, wow. So, you know, this, this, this pompous situation, uh, this very controversial thing, ultimately boiled down to, you're kind of a fraud. <laughs> I'm not a fan of fake watches. I think fake watches are the worst thing. Um, well, you think you knew? Yeah, of course. You don't get you don't get $2 million stolen from you. Not usually, at least. But you do know uh, you pay $2 million? Well, even if you paid 100000 which would have been a bargain for that watch. You, 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 that's, that's serious theft. Mm. Um, I hate you more now. Like, I hated you when you were kind of, I disliked you when you wore the expensive watch in the field. Now I really don't like you because you are endorsing fake watches. And now, literally an hour ago, it mm. was announced that Odell Beckham Jr. just partnered with Daniel Wellington. He's an official, he's an, I swear, what? It's, it's just happened while we were recording. Oh, that's fine. He's, he's now an official partner. He said that they are better than Richard Mill. Um, so well, there just, you go. Good for you, Daniel Wellington. You oh. just go from wearing a fake Richard Mill to partnering with Daniel Wellington. Right. Fine. On the Daniel Wellington note, <laughs> uh, I believe Movado acquired them like a year ago. Oh. And at the time, like, okay, it's just, yeah, it's a profit move. It's just diversification of, of assets. You're, you're fine. It's a larger portfolio. It doesn't damage the Movado name. Movado's a company right. and a brand, right? Movado's a brand and they also have a larger company. Yeah. Um, but Movado watches have only gotten worse. It's insane it seems like they like what did you bring daniel wellington in for their ip like what alibaba.com that's what it's called movado <laughs> you know I, I would love to again i'm ranting but i would love to be a part of like like the turnaround of movado mm. or like or like the turnaround of j crew or brooks brothers in so many ways right. i that's love fun. companies that could be great but aren't like they have all of the it's material potential. yeah but they're just not great because um, it yes. makes you because once you succeed you look like a rock star even though you in, you didn't invent anything you just well like, you told them how to use it properly right but you didn't have to Which you is. know it's kind of like the lazy man's like you know yeah but so many so few people know how to actually do that I know well evidently I'm not, not to say that I know how to do it but it's, well know, they certainly don't right I now. take a shot you know anyway right. uh, uh, will Tudor that. release another Submariner um, I hope so I think the Black Bay is a great watch. I think that uh, the Black Bay 58 is a really great watch, the smaller version of the standard Black Bay. Um, mm -hmm. What do I mean by great watch? I think that um, their, their gilt dials or, or you know, their matte you know, gold print dials are really handsome. Um, I think that the proportions are pretty, you know, well, I think the 58, they're great. Um, the standard Black Bay, they're a little bit big for me, um, but I love a lot of the character that goes on there. I love the chamfers on the lugs, um, classic Rolex choice. Um, I love the price point. I think that, yeah, and, I, and I love the brand. I mean, Tudor has serious history. You know, people who don't know watches think that Tudor's like, oh, that's the cheap Rolex. That's the, yeah. not true at all. I mean, yes, it was well, Rolex's, it was Rolex's more affordable, you know, range. Um, but but it, it's it's so much more than that. You know, Tudor has genuine history. So I would love to see Tudor release another Submariner. Something a little a little bit more fun. I'd love to see a blue Submariner. Yep. I would love to see, uh, I hate to say reissues. I don't want to see a reissue, but I'd love to see a snowflake. And if not that, then maybe uh, a maybe, you know, reintroduction um, of a 39 millimeter, comparably thin chrono. Um, I'd yeah. love to see it. What inspired you to make this amazing adjustment in your business? Um, uh, for the adjustment, if you guys don't know, the adjustment being uh, Damon Harris has now one launched a whole new website redesign, which Anna designs absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Um, and number two, uh, well, really threefold. Number two, an expansion of inventory. Um, we still offer you know watches in the one to two thousand dollar price range, but we are now expanding into the you know ten, twenty, thirty, forty. We even have a watch right now for sixty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars, Patek thirty nine forty P. 
perfect watch. Perfect kind of a watch. Perfect watch. We made a whole video about it. Uh, link is in the description. And third, uh, content. We're taking content more seriously. Um, we're right behind the desk right now, but as a whole, we're staying, uh, you know, outside. Outside of the office. We're trying to do shoots on location. We're spending a lot more time on it. We're being um, more fun. We're allowing ourselves to have more fun, you know, doing it. It's a lot yeah. more work, but it's more rewarding. Why? Because what else are we going to do? Um, li literally, this is what we do for a living. We're going to coast. That's not fun. Um, I don't think that we would be happy coasting. Um, even you know, the, and the funny thing from a from like a, um, a business growth and profit standpoint, when we grow during that process of growth, numbers drop because we're so busy working on growth that yeah. we definitely drop balls on you know sustaining the norm. Um, so it's funny when you grow because you have these high aspirations for what's going to happen, but you also see your regular business slowing, uh, but there's a future, right. you know, and when you do catch yourself now um, at this new level and you do hit a, hit a, um, uh, a consistent, you know, kind of stride, it's that much better, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's that much better. So yeah, you give up some small businesses, you give up some small opportunities um, to build really big ones. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I haven't wanted Theo and Harris to be a small company for years. Um, that's, how, that's when I started it. I started it to be a small company. Yeah. But no, I, I fully intend on Theo Harris being um, a large company, a large influential company. Um, a company that we're proud of working for, you know? So yeah, we're going to offer paddocks and we're going to offer APs and we're going to offer fun, interesting, curated watches. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. And you guys are here for the ride, so have fun. Absolutely. And on the content side, I think that while it, you know, we could say the same thing and make the same arguments and and show great B-roll just in here. Yep. I just think it makes, it's it's so much more worthwhile to be watching and making a video yep. that is in a cool location. Yep. Because even as an editor and like directing these videos, yep. it just gets a little stale yep. in here, even if even if the content is great, right. you know? And I think it's so easy to make a change. We're really close to New York City. Yep. So why not like use all of our resources? You know? Totally agree, so, totally agree, yeah. great. Who do you think is truly innovating and pushing boundaries in a good way lately? Oh, lately. I just said illegally. I was like, I don't know who's being wow. illegal. <laughs> Weird question. <laughs> um, good question. Innovation is a funny thing. Um, who's being innovative in the watch industry? It's such a such a hard question. Uh, I'm obviously going to independence because mainstream watch brands are not really innovating. Mm -hmm. Omega re-released the 321. Bleh. Um, you know, is, is Rolex's, you know, larger, you know, ceramic Pepsi that innovative? No, of course not. It's silly. Uh, it's very cool, but not, don't call it innovative. It's ridiculous. Um, even when Patek innovates, it's not really, uh, it doesn't really shake, shake anybody. Um, you know, Patek uh, developed uh, their uh, their new weekly calendar. It's a new complication for them. Very cool. Are we excited about it? Does that demonstrate a, a pattern of innovation with the company? Not necessarily. No, that's not, that's not to say that these companies are not innovating on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That's not true. I mean, every brand or every respectable brand does in some way stretch your, or, or push their limits. That may be uh, AP with their alternative uh, uh, materials like ceramic. Um, super cool. Innovative, like tr a truly, you know, profoundly innovative. No, right. Um, it's been done before. It's not genius, you know. But it's it, it is it is by definition an innovation. Uh, F. P. Jorn probably. Uh, F. P. Jorn seems to be one of the only people in the business that is just genuinely in love with watchmaking. Um, you know, my you know my interest in watchmaking does not you know, it's not derived from innovation, right? I'm interested in history. I'm interested in design. Um, I'm interested in, in, in watches stories, right? Um, but that being said, uh, I can even still recognize that on, from an innovation, you know, front, whether it's as low as the introduction of his Elegant, which was this, you know, super intelligent, you know, quartz, uh, luxury quartz watch. We made a whole video about it where I went into depth. You guys can watch that. Um, all the way up to the um, uh, Souverain uh, uh, Tullion Vertical, um, mm -hmm. which does full rotations every 30 seconds. Again, not the first time it's ever been done. I believe that Panerai has done it before. Um, this whole 30, uh, this whole 30 second, you know, rotation. Mm -hmm. th th this is this is still um, an achievement. 
right? This is still a technical mm -hmm. uh, improvement. I mean, the entire movement architecture, I'm sure, is entirely different yeah. than anyone else who has done it before, even if they have done it before. Mm -hmm. And it demonstrates a pattern of, of innovation, right? Yeah, exactly. It, it's their thing. Um, it's mm -hmm. not a mass market brand. Um, it's a successful independent, but it's not a mass market brand. They do things that most people don't care about because they care about it and because their core audience cares about it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's very impressive. So I guess long story short, FB Jordan, are there other brands out there? Yes, just most brands are not great innovators. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that watch brands aren't innovating, because they are. I just think that it, insignificant or negligible you know, innovations, they're, they're, they're just progression. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not right. so much groundbreaking. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This was a blast. Yeah, and if you if you like this video and if you want to see these sort of longer form question and answer videos. Every once in a while, maybe once or twice a month. Let us know in the comments if yeah. you liked it, what you want to see, what you want to talk about. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for watching. And please subscribe for more content like this. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Adios. I have two. One in yellow and the other in platinum. Mm -hmm.